Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting knife review by George. And today we're going to talk about the Benchmade 522 Procedural Ultra. If you have seen my other knife reviews, um, I would like to skip the first bit because all of the stuff here it will be found in the video description section of this uh, review. And we're going to dive into the detail section. For start, um, the overall overall points is that um, the knife has very good ergonomics. It's just excellent when you hold it in your hand, very generous size. Build quality, excellent. Um, although I would like to point out there's a slight blade plate here. And uh, the value is probably the most shiny point of this knife. Uh, it has a very, very good value. For the money you pay, you, you get a bench made in a very, very interesting style. You can see the classic look and the very well designed um, overall coolness of this knife. It's just fantastic. Uh, I paid a really quite reasonable price for this, so I was very happy. And um, again, if you, well, this knife is no longer available now. But if you can still find it in anywhere in like in the, in the shop or online, I would say this is a good um, good entry point for a Benchmade knife because of its, its relatively low price and also a very good um, representation of uh, Benchmade's quality level and uh, design and high craftsmanship. Anyways, in the in detail, for start, uh, this thing has a 440C stainless steel which was once considered as a high-end high stainless steel uh, for knives, but today is sort of a mid to lower end. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad steel. I, I actually really like um, sort of like a proven, a proven material like 440C because you know it worked for a very long time. And, it's, and of course the 440C here is made by Benchmade and I trust their quality control. It has good balance between the edge retention and uh, sharpen, sharpen ability and uh, obviously cost as well. And um, the stain resistance is good. Re stain resistance is good. Uh, the sharpness of this knife, I could not say anything else but other than very, very sharp, as you can see in here. Uh, this thing has a high hollow grind. I have a chart here representing what a hollow grind means in terms of, um, if you don't really know what, what that means. Here, as you can see, the cross section of the knife, uh, this thing represents this knife's uh, hollow grind, which means you get a lot less material in the, in the side of this grind than the other, the other grinds, uh, unless it's a full flat grind, of course. Um, this less material here just m means the knife will actually slice really, really well. So that's also very good as well. And uh, I mean by ho high hollow grind is that when you see the line here where the, the grind ends, it's actually far exceeds the midpoint of the, mid, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, midpoint of the, the blade. So it's very, very high reaching into the spine of the knife. And um, the blade finish has got a, what I believe the, the benchmark they call the BK1 or something like that. Uh, I don't think this thing is uh, anything like a diamond like carbon or a ceramic like a ceracoated coating. Evidently, uh, you can see that there's a wear of the sh of the of this coating on the tongue of the knife. It's it's pretty obvious here. Uh, so that it gives me impression this thing is probably more like a, a sort of like a nylon sort of styled finish, similar to your K-Bar knives. That's just my speculation, but um, but obviously the blackened blade gives you some what degree of uh, tacticality if, if you are say a military soldier or something and have to hide your, conceal your position. And the tip here is very, very pointy for a job point knife, uh, partially due to the fact that it's a, a whole high hollow grind, as you can see here. It's very thin this way. And if I thrust into this paper, it's, it's very, very easy as well. So that's very nice. Deployment on this knife, 
excellent. It's just, I think probably partially due to the fact that it's a slightly, uh, it's got it's got a slight blade movement. Uh, but this thing, every time I, I try to open it, it just opens up so easily. Uh, obviously the axis lock also makes it very, very smooth. And it's riding on Frostfur's uh, bronze uh, washers. You can see the, the Benchmade often uses very thick washers on their knives. The brown part on each end. Uh, the handle. Obviously, it's using the ambidextrous axis lock. In one of my videos here, um, well, one of my videos on Benchmade knives it will explain how the the The, uh, the, the, the Benchmade knives offers this very, very uh, finger safe sort of uh, locking uh, mechanism. So you can uh, stay your finger out of the way when you're closing the knife or whatever. And it's ambidextrous as well. So you can open and close the knife from both ends, both sides. And um, the other thing I'd like to mention about the axis lock is that uh, I previously demonstrated in some of my other knife videos is that access lock due to the fact that there is a uh, sort of a circular uh, circular bar inside of this um, this cage here um, so that means this thing this bar here as you can see the circle is able to free rotate so as time goes you you open and close the knife really really much um, it will wear out the, the material on the on this bar and um, but the, what this bar does is that because it's able to rotate, um, it's able to sort of um, offer more material to, to wear, uh, comparing with your normal liner lock, which just wears all the material on this one edge, or say a back lock wears the material on the on this two sides. Or for example, a spadical um, paramilitary tool or, or the other compression lock knives has uh, has to bear the wearing and tearing on that edge there and this edge. This thing, since it's got a rotation uh, mechanism here, it's able to actually, uh, it's, it's basically a mechanism that will last longer in time. So coming down to the next point, the ergonomics of this knife, it's just incredible actually. Uh, it's very, very thick by the way thick on this end so you, you touch you feel you feel like you're holding a, a fixed blade knife and it's got um, basically a lot of material to grip on and the handle here is very very large as you can see uh, i've got medium size hand i got this knife reasonably good and if you have to you can you can provide extra space on the on the handle uh, to, to grip on so if you have large hands, you still will find this knife okay to hold. Very generous sized hand, uh, handle. And um, there's the steel liners inside the, the knife. It will be very hard to see, but uh, as you can see here, the steel liners will provide more weight reduction for the size of the knife. It's not really too, too heavy. And um, all the hardware, so uh, including the screws, the, the liners, and um, the pocket clip, and the back spacer, everything's blackened, so that increases the stealth ability. And um, the traction on the knife, it's got like a somewhat like a diamond, uh, diamond style the traction, as you can see, but it's not really like a stereotypical, like a sort of just uh, grooved out diamond style. This is uh, like a 3D texture. So it gives you a very, very good security uh, if you're uh, using this knife in, in the wet condition. I really like that. Um, and it's very classic, as w uh, very classy as well. It's not like a cheap diamond style because it's like, see this like a 3D sort of contour on, this end, the, on the both ends and only the diamond uh, texture on the center. That's also very nice. And uh, the position of the pocket clip can be swapped to both both sides. So, and there's a lanyard hole on the on the handle, be it a very a rather small lanyard hole, uh, but uh, one is better than none, really. 
backspacer here uh, can be used for for some uh, sort of a like a bashing attack. Um, having a backspacer is better than not having a backspacer in terms of uh, sort of like a bashing attack. Overall, uh, there's no negative overall points. Uh, in detail though, uh, the blade tip is somewhat quite thin, so even though it's a, it's a job point and you think it should be very strong, this thing has a very, very fine, fine tip if you look at it from this way. It's, uh, we're talking about maybe about one millimeter thick for about three millimeters long. So if you do use this knife very hard and stab it into wood, I, I will, I will I'll be fairly certain that the tip will break if you use a bit of a tor torsional uh, sort of movement. Something you got to watch out for. Uh, the blade play, I already mentioned it. So, and it's even more, more easy to, to, to see the blade kind of when it's close to position. So far, it hasn't actually given me any problems. Anyways, um, and obviously there's no jimping on the blade, but I don't know how necessary it is given the fact there's, there's a lot of uh, sort of like a finger ramp here and uh, uh, a thumb ramp here, it's, it's reasonably good in terms of holding your hand together. If you really, really want to, when you hold the knife like this, the, the jimping may or may not be that essential. And, and I think if you put the jimping in here, it may affect the overall look of this knife. And uh, in terms of the handle, there's a very small line at the hole, I already mentioned it. It's quite small, um, maybe as, as small as Benchmade ever has gone to. Um, and due to the partial backspacer here, the knife can is sort of like uh, half open, half closed. So um, if that bothers you, okay. So the handle material here is um, according to Benchmade, they used the Noru. Um, GTX, that's a type of nylon they used. Uh, it's probably similar to sort of a Spadicles FRN or whatever. I look up the, on the internet, the, um, the material is often used on automotive applications like cars and, and um, I'm guessing probably say um, the interior of the car, you know, the plastic bits that will make up the panel of the car. I'm not sure how chemically stable this material is, or perhaps mechanically, it doesn't live up to the sort of expectation of other things like the the uh, nylon standard nylon material. You no longer find this material on any of the Benchmade current production knives, so perhaps they find some better replacement. There's something uh, to look out for, and the other thing is the access lock. Uh, they rely on a uh, omega spring, I should have a demonstration here. The omega spring can break, uh, so if one breaks, you got one on the other, one on each end, uh, but if one breaks, the, the balance of this axis will no longer be super high and, and uh, it won't be safe to use the knife if it's only got one spring that's still operational. Maybe you should look out for that. Um, Perhaps I, I would recommend that like, if they could, they, they, they should improve um, the access lock by maybe putting a, a coil spring, which uh, should be more durable because coil spring, if it breaks, it becomes two smaller coil springs, but still pushing, one, pushing against one another. It doesn't simply just become, well, not usable when it breaks, sim like, unlike, the, unlike the Omega springs. And the uh, positive things based on my speculation is that uh, the knife has a good good belly to actually uh, sharpen on the flat bench stone, which is very nice. Um, and I, I think that the length of this, um, this straight section could be reduced to improve the belly, but, um, but there's a lot of belly here. 
and uh, the pointy tip could be uh, used to probably used as a, a weapon against Kabbalah because um, Kabbalah material don't stand very well um, against the the pointy knives. And the, the, the looks on this knife is just quite, it's pretty damn amazing, honestly, for the price. Uh, I think uh, it looks better than the Benchmade Gerbertillion series, which cost a bit more money. But the Gerbertillion series, I think, just looks somewhat cheap, you know. Um, the pivot design here is uh, sort of like, if you look at this over here, there's a knot holding the, the pivot together. Um, unlike Benchmade's usual configuration, which is just a sort of like a socket and you put the screw inside that socket from this end. Um, but this is not the case. I'm not too sure if this potentially perhaps make, make the pivot stronger in some sense. That's something I cannot confirm with you. And negative things uh, is that uh, there's a stop pin that's held by screw from this end you can see there's a screw there and stop pin goes in there a lot of the bench made knives um, like the 940 943 series um, you will find that the stop pin is actually held by simply just putting a solid steel pin inside uh, sockets on each end and in that case the stop pin would be a solid steel whereas this because you got to put screw inside a socket uh, that socket is going to bear the load when the when the blade hits that hits that hits that um that socket, it's going to probably put some pressure on it. So I'm not too sure if that's a better design or or worse. You be the judge. Uh, the finger guard. Um, I would say currently it's got like a a, a ramp, uh, although the ramp has a very very big stuff. Sort of like a big curve here, I think it's slightly more pronounced around here, could be perhaps useful, but this is not a big deal. Uh, the, all the negative things based on my speculation are simply just sort of a nitpicking. Anyways, um, the Nori GTX, um, I, I don't know how well it is going to hold. Um, I'm assuming this Backspacer here is made of the Nario G GTX material and if you use this knife as impact tool perhaps don't use it on something too hard because that is uh, somewhat a plastic material and it may not hold so well if you use a lot of impact. And um, over here you can see there's a very very small distance between the knife tang and the, the handle blade edge. So when you hold the knife, your finger is actually likely to go and touch the, um, the back of the tongue, which I usually keep the knife with a lot of oil in, in, the, in the section. So the oil might actually go on your finger and that kind of cause issue, perhaps, um, cause issue in terms of uh, gri gripping the knife securely because you got some oil on your hand. Um, perhaps that's something they could improve or perhaps not. Anyways, the coating material here is the BK1, um, like I previously mentioned. Um, it's not going to be a super durable material. It probably will wear out easier than the DLC or titanium nitrate or the ceramic coating. Uh, coating. So that's something to look out for as well. Um, the final notes for the knife. I, I really, really like this knife, especially given the price. It, it actually saddens, to, saddens me that Benchmade discontinued this knife because I think it's just such a well-designed knife. Also uh, using sort of a practical but not high-end material, driving the cost quite cheap. Uh, primarily, we're talking about the 440C stainless steel and the, the G10, like, sorry, I'm sorry. This is not G10, uh, this is um, sort of FRN styled material. So that means they can over mold, uh, they can mold this material into the shape and do the assembly instead of having to CNC machine G10s or whatever. The cost of this knife is driven reasonably low for an average consumer. And, um, and the style of this knife is just wonderful and it feels nice as well in your hands. 
but currently Benchmade no longer offer this knife. Um, they offered a 527, if I remember, or a 570 or something like that, uh, which is called the Procedure 2, which has the S30V, steel, uh, S30V stainless steel aluminum, uh, aluminum alloy handle. Both of, material, both of these materials are a huge improvement over this thing, but the price of that knife is double as much as this guy. So I think for the average consumer who doesn't know Benchmade well, very well, I would like to get a Benchmade for, for a, a trial. I think they don't have the option of buying this knife to get a feel of what it is to be a Benchmade owner. That's very unfortunate. I hope Benchmade somehow uh, works on the issue out, like perhaps bring back this guy um, and waste the same price. And I think uh, that'd be very, very nice for all of us. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll see you next time.